Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive on shift timing and shift pressures um, in the HP Tuner software for the GM, Gen, uh, the GM four speed, six speed, eight speed, uh, and 10 speed automatic transmissions. Uh, I've done a bunch of videos on this stuff, but we've had some viewers and subscribers request a little bit more in depth on what to set the shift timings to, uh, the pressures, why, um, and how they differ across the different transmissions uh, from the different vehicles and years. So let's dive into it. Okay guys, so let's get into it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go into a, we're gonna start with a Gen 3. Um, and we'll just, this is the same for cars and for trucks. We're gonna start with this 2000 Silverado 5.3 file. It's got a 4L60 in it. Um, so the big question lately has been, we're gonna toggle over here to transmission, is when setting the shift timings and the shift pressures, and I've got several videos on this you can go back and look at, is why do we change them? What do we set them to? If I command a certain shift time, do I get it? How do I get it? You know, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Okay, so when it comes to these four speeds, um, these are different from the six, eight, and 10 speeds. And we're gonna start with the torque management. A, these four speeds don't learn and are not adaptive the way that the later 6L80s, the A8s, and the 10s are. So the number one way uh, to blow up a four speed is to get rid, in the torque management section, is to get rid of this torque management right here. Okay, so we've talked about this before. This is the uh, amount of spark in percentage. These are percentages of spark that can be pulled based on a given engine torque, okay? Now, the four speeds don't necessarily report an accurate engine torque the exact same way that the um, later model stuff does. And I'll show you an example. Uh, we'll go to one of the uh, files from my truck and you can see down here it doesn't look like i was logging in that one let's see if i can find one where i was logging engine torque um so here we go so you can see here uh in my graph under this engine torque this is uh engine torque and i've got the per the you know the it looks kind of like the the high octane spark table um and this is reporting a torque value although i would not necessarily rely on this to be accurate. It's just kind of known that, that this is not an, uh, an actual accurate reading. Um, you would need to compare this with your math, you know, reading times 10. Uh, so, you know, at, at 200 pounds a minute, you know, or, or what is it, 20 pounds a minute times 10, 200, so it'd be 200 horsepower, something like that. Um, you know, but you can use this table in reference, you know, when you are driving, and you can see here, it makes a shift. You can look at where you fall right here at 5,500 RPM, you know, or somewhere in this 300, you know, range. So when we come over here, we know that we're falling somewhere in there and that's where we can attack this torque management. This is the, the number one spot where if you zero this table out, there's a caveat to this table too. If you go over to engine and you go to spark, Okay, and you go to, no, it's in torque management, sorry. If you come over here to torque management engine, this spark retard versus torque reduction, these are the values that those transmission tables are looking up. So if you zero out this table, it's gonna get rid of all, your, uh, all of your torque management. And you'll know because when it shifts, it'll shift very cleanly, not firmly, so to speak, but it'll shift cleanly. It won't feel like there's a little bit of a, a hesitation or a drop. Um, but that does mean the transmission is shifting under full power. So you do have to be really careful about that. Typically what I do in mine is I think everything up to about 440 foot pounds, I zero out. And then what I do in here is I wanna say in the normal mode, I take, I wanna say that I take about 75% out, you know, um, so it still has some in it. And then in my performance section, I think I zero out everything up to about the 320 range. And then I take this only down by about 25%. So it's still, and then you can blend kind of like this. So it still has some left in it. Um, but there again, in the performance mode, it's shifting, you know, uh, it's, it's making the shifts at higher RPMs and a higher shift point. So it is under more load. So you do have to be cautious there. Um, so in these four speeds, um, you know, that's going to be a big factor. You kind of need to decide, you know, the life of your transmission, um, how much are you willing to take out? How, how long do you think it'll live? 
Um, you know, and for a bone stock or a modified vehicle, you can do just that and you're gonna be okay. Um, you know, again, you just wanna be cautious with how much you're really taking out. If it, if it freaks you out, you can return these values to stock and just take 25% out of the whole table and start there. Um, so the next thing is gonna be, shift timing is one that people have asked about. You can see here, just because you command this in the table does not mean it's gonna be executed. That torque management is gonna have something to do with it. Um, in both these tables, I'm gonna go 0.15. Actually, I'm gonna go 0.15. Yep, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna copy this. You don't ever wanna set them to zero, um, but this is just the this is just the what they're aiming for so you're gonna have to play with the torque management as well as the shift pressures okay this is the fastest the shift can happen it's not saying that it is gonna happen this fast okay especially if you've done heads and cam just like on my yukon you know if you did not um add any shift pressure to it uh, take a little bit of torque management out, it would still, the shifts would still happen very slowly. So you can do this on a, a bone stock vehicle, okay? Um, I would probably start with this. Take it out and drive it, see what it does. The next one is gonna be the shift pressures. You wanna set your max max pressure here to 96. That's just kind of the, the norm. Um, for a bone stock vehicle, this is not bad. Um, you know, if you don't have a camshaft, I would probably, I would probably do my shift timing and take 25% of my torque management out, leave this table like it is, go see how it drives. When you start adding power in the form of a camshaft or heads or you know, forced induction of some sort, some sort, now is when you actually have to physically add more line pressure in. Now, granted, this is also referencing a transmission that has not been built, so to speak, where all of the oil passageways have been drilled out and the transmission mechanically is making more pressure. You'll actually have to go the opposite direction with this if you have done that, okay? So if you have had a 4L60 built or even a 4L80, um, you may actually have to take pressure out of this table because the, the, you know, the transmission builder physically built it into the transmission that you can't, you can't tune that around out, tune that out. You'll have to actually go down. Okay. So a good place to start, people ask all the time, you know, you know, uh, what do I do? Um, a good place to start is in your file is maybe to take your performance table and just paste it into your normal table and just see. And there again, when you go out and drive, if you do light throttle pulls, okay, you can go out and you can log where the shift is happening. You can, you can log, you know, the current gear over here. It doesn't look like I am now, but you can log transmission current gear. You can watch where the shift happens, um, you know, and you can uh, go in there and you can add, you know, five PSI in that area, blend between, you know, you could say somewhere right here around the 440 range. It's not, not quite firm enough. You could add five PSI and then you could kind of blend in here, something like this, go out and test it again. Transmission tuning is very subjective, okay? So um, yeah, so the shift timing um, in a nutshell, and this is gonna be the same for the, the six, eight, and 10 speeds. They're just gonna look different. We're gonna go over those here in a second. So you know, these shift times, this is just kind of a target. Um, you know, if you have a bone stock truck, I haven't driven a bone stock truck in a while with a stock transmission, you know, and tested just this, um, you know, in quite a while, so I can't really recall what it exactly it feels like and what it looks like in a data log because I don't have anything like that um, as of right now. But start with this. Um, you know, if you keep your torque management in, um, you know, um, then you'll have to go in and you'll have to add some more pressure. 25% um, of your torque management being removed on these four speeds is gonna be fine. You're not gonna have any issues there, okay? This is exactly more or less how I've got mine set up. You know, with my, my shift times are 0.15, uh, my performance shift tables and my normal shift table. Um, I've got a little bit more torque management in my performance table um, than I do my normal table. But again, in my when I'm driving around in normal mode or cruising, I'm not likely getting up here very much. So I kind of want the shifts to be clean and to be firm, okay? Um, so the next one is if we go to a 4L60, and the 60s uh, and the eights and the 10s kind of look similar. Um, so we'll pick, like a Camaro SS, which I've done a couple of, okay? Um, if we go over here to transmission, 
One of the differences with these is that we're not really going to touch torque management. We're gonna actually leave this like it is. Um, again, if you take all of this out, it's gonna shift really aggressively. Um, you know, so when we go over to our shift timings, uh, timing, we go to our, where are we at? Am I in the right spot? Yeah, I'm in the right spot. Here we go, torque adder. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so you can see that these, these are even more sluggish than the four speeds, okay? So somewhere in here, and I've taught this in my other videos, 0.25K, okay? uh, and this is based on torque. And these transmissions actually report a pretty accurate torque amount. Um, so having your, your, in, you know, your engine tune dialed in is pretty important. Um, this is how I kind of teach everyone to set this stuff up is 0.25, you know, in these regions down here, a little bit slower up here, and then you just blend them in between. And you can copy and paste this table um, you know, to all of these. Uh, I, I wouldn't do the skip shifts. I would just do the direct shifts. That's just me. Um, but there again, this is going to be a good starting point, you know, to get, you know, the timing to, to be just a little bit, you know, shorter. Um, we don't ever have to do anything with our downshifts. Uh, shift pressures, you know, this max pressure is a big one. Uh, the first thing I would probably do is bump this to 175 and on a stock vehicle, same thing with this max line pressure. I'd probably come over here and I'd go and match it with 175. Um, and I would, I would go out and drive it just like this. Adjust your shift timing, adjust these two things right here, don't touch anything else. If you go under upshift and pattern X, okay, these are your shift pressures, um, you know, transmission oil temp on one side, torque and pound feet on the other side. There again, depending on, you know, your modifications, you might only be falling in this range. So if you want firmer shifts, just because you're seeing 203, you know, pat, you know, pounds of pressure, you may not even be getting there. Um, and there again, if you haven't adjusted this max pressure right here, um, you know, then even if you are making that power, it's not gonna let you go above the 109 or whatever it is. So that's why we say to start there is because it's gonna allow more of this table to be used and interpolated between, you know, um, you know, so, and again, these, these numbers right here are really, really, really safe. There's some people out there that really, really crank these things up. And if you're new to this and you're kind of nervous, that's going to be just fine. You're, you're not going to hurt anything. You're going to be okay. Especially if you've got torque management, you know, left in, um, sometimes you'll see people do a 0.9 on these one, two and two, three shifts. Um, typically it just depends. I typically don't. Um, the other table in the six, eight and 10 speeds, um, that the 4L60s and 80s don't have is under the Spark Advanced tab is this minimum spark table. So you'll notice that if you look at a, a four-speed file, it's one line, okay, and it's just it's just RPM. So, you know, at 3,300 RPM, you know, the max it can pull is, you know, negative 10 degrees. I usually set the whole table to like negative seven. This table, especially if you have a converter car, you know, and this goes for the, the Gen 4s and 5 vehicles, you know, you can really adjust this table, you know, and still keep your torque management in without having, you know, to go in and do anything crazy there. And it's still safe and you can just limit how much gets pulled here. I've got videos on this one before. This is one of my favorite tables to use. Um, don't use this area as a crutch, okay, to get it to idle, especially you Gen 5 people, okay? Um, so that's what I would do here. Um, and that's going to be a really good safe bet. Again, I, I would leave this alone. Okay. I would go straight for my shift timings, bump the pressures up a little bit. And again, there's some other stuff in here that gets modified, but I'm not going over that right now. You can watch my other videos on that. Um, so yeah, that's a six speed. If we go to an eight and a 10 speed, they look, uh, surprisingly similar. Um, let's go right here. Eight speed auto file. Yeah, same thing. So your torque management looks the exact same. And there's some stuff in here to change, but there again, you, you have to watch my other videos. I'm not going over that right now. Um, so there again, shift time, upshift, you would do the same thing here, okay? The axes are a little different, but it's still the same, same concept. So I'd probably go something like this and then copy and paste, you know, to all of these other tables as well as the coast, okay? and whatever pattern you're using, you know, uh, that you configure. Um, shift pressures, this does look a little bit different. So our max pressure is, this, is here. Again, I would go to 175. You notice that these eight speeds, there's less tables. The 10 speeds are even more, which is kind of nice. 
okay? Um, I would start there uh, and just roll with that. Um, we're not gonna touch any of these upshift or downshift uh, you know, tables, uh, but what we would do here is that, um, you know, 175 is our max, so you know, we'd be falling somewhere in here. Um, you know, if you're making more torque than that, um, you know, you may have to bump this. You may have to go to 225, something like that. Um, and then at which point you could go in here and you could add, whoops, my bad. You could go up and you could bump in 5% increments, you know, this table. You would take this, you could copy and paste it to each one of these, and then also do your TCC offs, okay? So the whole thing's getting multiplied by 5%. Um, this is just a quick way, again, this works the exact same way though as the four speeds, is uh, you know, you set this shift timing and that's the target that it's trying to aim for, but you're really using those shift pressures, you know, and to a lesser extent on these vehicles, you know, the torque management to get to that desired time, okay? So the biggest takeaway is that if you're nervous about anything, leave the torque management, don't touch it. Don't touch it, just leave it like it is. You can watch my other videos on what to adjust here. Um, you know, and, and a lot of it comes down to feel. What I like versus what you might like or what your buddy likes is gonna be super, super different. You know, these are just some really good starting points, okay? So uh, again, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to uh, comment down below, let me know, shoot me an email. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one, guys, thanks.